Now we all know the Sane Smart and Gen Mitsu names, they make excellent CNC products for the hobby market, but guess what? They now have a laser. Let's take a look at the Gen Mitsu L8. Welcome back and hopefully you enjoyed that quick intro into the Genmitsu L8. This is a really nice laser in part because it's built more like a CNC. It draws from some of that heritage of Saint Smart and Genmitsu and it's built like a tank. So it's going to be really robust. It's going to probably last forever. It's unlike those really cheap uh, thin framed open frame lasers. And one of the nicest things here is it's enclosed, which means you don't have to worry about those stray beans flying around. And I really like this trend happening in 2024, and I think we're gonna see a whole lot more of it, but they're here now, and we're gonna take a look at this laser. I'll run some of the standard tests. I'll show you how to get it hooked up into Lightburn as well, and maybe do a quick project, and we'll come up with a bit of an assessment at the end, but I have a feeling you're really gonna like this laser. So the first thing you need to do is get the laser connected to Lightburn, and I'll bring up the devices. You can see I've already got mine set up, but I'll show you what I did. Now you can use the find my laser and it will discover it and set it up in some fashion, but it, I struggled with that. I actually tried it and, and it was actually a little more difficult. Genmitsu also provides a device driver for this, so you can actually just import it and there it is. So if we wanted to actually go look at this thing, it chooses Gerbal and obviously Serial gives it a name. You can change the name. Uh, the, Everything is just kind of set up for you here, which is which is really nice. Now, with that laser selected, I can then just use Lightburn like I always would. I could drop a shape on, do my settings, whatever. Now, one thing you also get with this laser is a camera. And if I just switch over to the camera view, you can see it's already selected an overlay here. And uh, we might want to calibrate this a little bit better, but uh, I won't do that in this video because it's a standard Lightburn camera calibration and uh, you can then use this camera it comes right off the top so you don't have to worry about getting a camera aligned uh, every time you want to use it it's it's just there and that's a really nice feature all right next thing to do is to run some standard benchmarks so let me go do that and i'll come back with the results and uh, we'll see what this laser looks like from a from a test perspective so i've got all the results done and you can see on the cut test it it does a pretty decent job it's on par with the algo laser delta this one actually has a little bit more cutting through here, about one extra square, but that could just be material variation. Uh, on the engraving side, this is where things got a little bit different. I actually had to bump up the uh, the range from, normally I do 5,000 to 15,000. Here I had to do 7,000 to 17,000 just because it was just cutting into the material so much. So a good sign if you want to engrave because you'd be able to go very quickly. Now on the gradient tests, uh, I also bumped up the range from 6,000 to 8,000 and, and then went up from there. Good gradient range here, uh, probably best around 14, 15,000 millimeters a minute. And I use that to do the, the dog engrave and not too bad. It, the low end is actually probably about 15, 12, 15%. And I started at 7%, so that's why that's why in the collar you can't make out the the fur. So uh, no biggie. I, I could just do the, the test again and, and get better results, I'm sure. All right, so for a little project here, I just pulled the image I built for the last video on making uh, clear acrylic signs. And I just filled in all of the shapes with values I pulled off the engraving test. And then I put a black outline around it. And again, I pulled the value off the cut test and I'm just gonna put this together and see what it looks like. So I'll give you a little action with the laser running here as I do this engrave job. And you can see it's coming out, you know, as expected, uh, the cut as well, uh, a single pass. Again, I pulled these off the, off the test results and you can see the final output here looks, looks wonderful. So in the end, Nice little project for, for testing this. There's absolutely no surprises here. This Genmitsu L8 is, it just works.
Now, for the most part, the Genmitsu L8 is like any other laser. It certainly has a laser. It's got an X and Y and limit switches and all those cool things. But I wanted to take a look here at a couple of things that are unique to this laser and why it might make a difference for you, even though they're fairly subtle. And the first one is the risers. And they're built in so you can literally lift this laser up very quickly and in seconds you can have the, the laser raised. And what it does is add about two and a half inches of height to, to the total lift. And that allows me to do the next thing I want to look at, which is the rotary. Now, when Sane Smart sent this Genmitsu L8 laser to me, they didn't send me a rotary, and I checked on their website and I don't see one. But I'll let you in on a little secret. You can use almost any rotary on almost any laser. So for this particular example, I chose the x 2 RA2 Pro, which I just had sitting here on the shelf. And I'm just going to plug that in, and uh, I'll show you that it'll work. Uh, all we have to do is set it up in Lightburn. Okay, to set up the chuck is pretty easy. You go to laser tools, uh, rotary, and we're using the chuck, and I want to enable it. And for, in the case of the RE2 Pro, it's 128 millimeters per revolution. And uh, the dowel that I have put in the chuck currently is 11 millimeters. So all that's left here is to hit the test button to see if it rotates, and then we'll create a little job. And it shouldn't really be a surprise to find out that the test button uh, made the ro rotary actually do what it's supposed to do. Now it may be going in the opposite direction. We'll find out when we do an engrave. And uh, we'll just set up something quick in Lightburn. So for a design, I just grabbed my company logo and I stuck it into Lightburn. Now we're using uh, current positioning here when we're using the rotary. So I'm gonna position the laser over and uh, when I'm ready, I'll just frame it to make sure it's gonna fit uh, mostly horizontally because I don't wanna run into the chuck. And then I'll start the job and you'll see it actually worked okay. Uh, remarkably well, in fact. Usually uh, the text is backwards for me the first time when I'm doing something unknown like this, but came out exactly the way it was supposed to. And there you go. If you have a rotary, uh, you can certainly use it with this laser. So all in all, I think this is an above average laser. The build quality here is excellent and it definitely fits into the into the rest of the Sane Smart product line from a quality perspective. Uh, the fact that it's enclosed is nice because it, it it keeps the fumes in there and you can you can kind of control how they get they get evacuated out. And it also makes it uh, a little more quiet than you would expect, which uh, I had to answer a question just recently on lasers and the noise they make. And this one I think is, is definitely quieter than most. Okay, so I didn't run into any real issues when I was running this laser. There were a couple of minor things I wanted to call out though. Uh, the first one is the air assist LED on the front of the laser module. It's supposed to be green when air assist is running and mine got stuck on red quite often even though there was air coming out of the out of the air assist. Uh, I did talk to Saint Smart about it and they said, yeah, operationally, it's not an issue. It's fine. It's something to do with the sensor and they're going to take a look at that at some point. The other issue, which is kind of a pet peeve of mine, is the cables come out of the front of this laser. Now, in fairness, they're all over on the left side of the laser, so they're out of the way of any other control that you're going to use on the front panel. But from a human factors perspective, I think anything that the user isn't going to touch on a regular basis should either be in the back or around the corner, just out of the way. Uh, again, it didn't impact my operation, but it's just an aesthetic thing. And last on the list, the exhaust fan at the back, I think is a little underpowered. I didn't run into any smoke issues in, in my workshop as a result of using this laser, but I did I did observe smoke coming off the laser and just kind of lazily wafting to the back to get out of to get out of the laser and and it just seemed a little underpowered to me. Uh, anyway, nothing serious at all with this laser. I think it's fantastic. Uh, it's also available in a 40 watt, which I can only imagine is just unbelievably awesome. And uh, I wish they had sent me one, but I understand, you know, that most people are probably going to buy a 20, 25 watt laser like this one. Now, if you do want to see how this Jinmitsu L8 compares to, uh, you know, another laser, you can click this video up here. But if you are interested in buying this one, I'll put an affiliate link in the description down below. And if you use that, you're helping out the channel, which I appreciate. And we wind down, so get out there, make your world, and I'll see you next time.